Good morning, everybody, and welcome to day two of our thought for the day for this week in on the subject of Malachi. And uh, in this wonderful little prophecy at the end of the Old Testament, um, which is so meaningful for us today, in a day when 450 odd years before Jesus came, uh, when times were dark, when the people of God who'd had good times under Nehemiah had been revival and promises made to God, they'd broken their promises and they'd gone back to their old ways. And uh, God's word comes to Malachi, uh, this prophet who, who is so struck with God's word, he has to speak it out because that's what prophets do. And uh, he brought God's word to God's people. So this is a message for God's people. And it's very, very appropriate, as we saw yesterday, for our day. Um, so let's get into the word this morning. Before we do that, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this new morning and we pray, Father, that you would bless us as we come around your word and help us to hear what you have to say to us today. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So uh, the title for this morning is I Have Loved You. I Have Loved You. This is what God said to what we left us with yesterday, didn't we? That God says he has loved us. Um, let's read what it says. An oracle, verse 1. The word of the Lord to Israel through Malachi. I have loved you, says the Lord. But you ask, how have you loved us? What an impertinent question to God, isn't it really? Where's the evidence, God? Where's the evidence that you've loved us? That's basically what they're saying. And that's a very, very difficult thing to say, isn't it? Let's go back to start. An oracle, we said yesterday, an oracle. It, it's not really an oracle. It's more of a burden. That's what the word means there. And God's prophets have a burden. God's preachers have a burden to bring God's word. God's word is a weighty thing. That's what he's getting across here. It carries weight. It cannot be ignored. No matter whether you believe it or not, you can't ignore God's word because ultimately God's word will prevail. Whether people accept it or they don't, God's word will prevail. You can choose not to believe it. You can choose to dispute it. You can choose to argue with it. You can choose to completely reject it and ignore it. But the truth is that God's word will prevail, mainly because God is the author of life, the creator of heaven and earth and the universe and everything in it. And therefore what he says matters. It matters what he says. It comes with all the weight that that implies. There's a man, you know, when we, we look for people to inform us about what's happening with coronavirus at the moment, we look to those people who know what they're talking about, don't we? And their weight, their word matters, carries weight. And God's word, more than anyone else, his word matters and it carries weight, doesn't it? It cannot just be dismissed, even though we might want to. And the, the sin of the world, of course, goes right back to the Garden of Eden, that that's what we do. We dismiss and we don't believe God's word. We reject it and therefore it lands us in all kinds of trouble. And that's why God's people in Malachi's day, 450 years before Jesus, were in the darkness again. And there's a warning coming to them through Malachi. But the warning comes with that wonderful kind of statement, isn't it? As we said yesterday, a soundbite. I have loved you, he comes and says, doesn't he? And uh, and the, the, this is kind of doubted by the people here. You know, sometimes it's, it's, it's the best news ever. And it, it, God's word is sweaty. But even when it's good news, I have loved you, people still don't believe it. And it's a sense, a bit like you know, we, we have that today, don't we? Even with the good news, perhaps most of us would believe about this vaccine. We might be, find it difficult and struggle with little bits of it. But ultimately, it's good news. But then you have people at an extreme who would just doubt everything about it. It's a conspiracy. It's a con. It's a setup. There's all sorts of things going wrong. Misinformation going around, isn't there? And, um, uh, and you know, this is going to be harmful for us, what's meant to be good. And that's the way of the world with God's word as well, isn't it? And so we've always been able to do that. We've always been able to turn good news into bad. And so God says, I have loved you. And even that is turned into, well, how have you loved us? Where's the evidence, God? Where's the evidence that you've loved us? And these people are beginning to doubt that God loves them. Loved what God says when he loved us. That's a perfect tense, past, present and future. It's got the all encompassing. God loved us in the past. The Bible says before we were even born. That's an amazing truth. There's a lot of amazing, difficult truths in this, letter, this, this prophecy of, of Malachi that comes to God's people because God's word is weighty. Lots of weighty truths. 
And so the idea that God loved us before we were even born, that's hard to grasp, isn't it? But that's who God is. He loved us in the past. He loves us today in the present, not because we have earned his love in any way, but because he just loves us. I have loved you. No matter whether we are for him or against him, God loves the world that he made. And he also will love us, he says, those who are his people. He's loved in the past, in the present, and will do for all eternity in the future too. And that should be good news for us this morning, shouldn't it? It could also be, um, well, a bit scary as well, because what have I done with the God who loves me this much, that the God who creates the universe loves me this much, much? This sealed deal, this is done forever, that God has decided he loves you. And tomorrow we're gonna to look at the weighty implications of that. You keep using that word, but it's true. Uh, are some difficult things to understand about God's love. But but what about maybe today we think, maybe you're one of those people. And we do think, well, God, I'd love to see more evidence of that. I'd love to see more practical evidence in my life of how you love me. Maybe asking the same questions as the people in Malachi's day. How, how have you loved me? Prove it. Show me how you love me. And, and in, in a day like they were living, a day of small things, they'd rebuilt the temple. It wasn't as grand as the old one. And many people had just thought, this is just no way, this is not God. This is not, God's not working in the same way as he did in the past. This is a day of small things and perhaps doubted things. It's not like it used to be, the good old days. Do you think of those? The good old days, whatever they are for you, we've all got them, no matter how old we are. It was better in the past than it is now. And sometimes we doubt that God's still at work and he still loves us. And But we, we can let it go too far, can't we? This is the God who made heaven and earth and is always at work. And his word tells us that. And he doesn't change. That's what we said yesterday, didn't we? This God loves us and he hasn't changed. And yet we dare to accuse him and say, well, Lord, you've you've neglected me. I haven't. don't feel your love. Lord, you've, maybe you've forgotten me. I feel like other people are being blessed, but not me. Lord, you, you, you've failed me in some, in, 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 in some way. Lord, I feel that you're failing me in some, some ways in my life. I've prayed for this and you haven't answered my prayer in the way I wanted. God, you've let me down. And so much of that accusatory talk comes from a pride that's within us that we know better than God. And the people of Israel in Malachi's day had come to that point that they'd found other ways to live because they didn't like the way that God wanted them to live. And so it manifests itself in we doubt that God loves us. So when God comes, God's prophet comes and says, I've loved you from eternity and will do. They say, well, show us, show us the evidence. We don't really feel it. And because we don't feel it, we won't believe it. And it's, it's doubting. When we start to doubt God's love, it's the first step to unbelief in this way. It, it, it goes right back to the garden, as I said before, Adam and Eve in the garden. The, the, the lie of the, the devil to them was that, has God really said these things? And it, what, was the, it, what was Satan trying to do there? He was trying to undermine God's weighty um, it, you know, it's words that were always going to be true and cast doubt on it and say, God's word isn't as true as you think it is. It's not as weighty as you think it is. It's one to be, his word is, should just compete with everybody else's. In fact, you could be, this is a lie, isn't it? You could be as knowledgeable as him. You, you, you just as well, you may as well run your own life just like God. That's what the lie of back in the Garden of Eden was, wasn't it? Take the fruit of the tree. God knows you'll be like him. He just wants you to keep you in place. Kind of all the lies that we know today about what it means to follow Jesus, doesn't it? And we see it there. And into all of this, even into the Garden of Eden, God speaks to them, doesn't he? And he speaks to us. I have loved you. And it's never, ever changed. And it never, ever will change. So what do we do with that this morning? We should never really question it, shouldn't we? This is the God we're talking about here. The God of heaven and earth. And he has chosen to love you. We're going to talk about more of that tomorrow. The implications of that. But the weightiness of that, that means it comes with all the guarantees of that, that he's never going to let you not go. That's why Jesus could say, no one will ever snatch you out of my hand because who's big enough to do it? Who's capable of doing that? No one. Because God is the creator of heaven and earth. I have loved you. We need to keep that in mind as we go through all these things. Be reminded of the, in these day of small things, in the difficult times, in the dark times, in the worrying times. I have loved 
loved you and it'll never ever change God's eternal love for us and no wonder Jesus said when you know the truth of this and you accept the truth of this and you you, you reject the lies of Satan that, that undermines that love then that truth will set you free and my prayer for you today is that truth will set you free too so join me tomorrow if you look at a little bit more of this wonderful prophecy as we unpack this what does this mean again that God loves us and deal with some difficult things but we'll do that in the morning let's pray together shall we Heavenly Father, we thank you for your presence with us today. We pray again, Lord, that you will bless us and bless this word to us and help us, Lord, to revel and to relax and to, um, and to be confident in the love of our God that you have for us and have done past, present and future. Lord, if, you, if we know that you love us today, however small that is, no wonder Jesus says it's a, it's a mustard seed. That's all we need. Faith in the wonderful love of God for us. And we thank you for that love again today. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm.